coming up on LAX 18 News at 6. UK quarterback Mike Hartline finds himself behind bars. We'll tell you why. A community mourning the deaths of a grandmother and her two granddaughters killed in a house fire. A Jessamine County woman walks right in on a man robbing her house, and that's not the worst of it. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 6. Legal troubles for UK starting quarterback. What he's accused of doing is tonight's LEX 18 Big Story at 6. Good evening, I'm Nancy Cox. Thanks for joining us at 6. Kevin Christopher has the evening off. We'll have the latest on the case against Mike Hartline in just a moment. But first, another blast of winter is headed to Kentucky. Let's go to Chief Meteorologist Bill Mack in the LEX 18 Storm Tracker HD Weather Center. And we are seeing the warm temperatures right now ahead of the storm. And what's coming in for Sunday, and this is not going to be the epic crippling kind of storm, but it will be the kind that may slow you down a little bit during the day on Sunday. So let's take a look at the timeline. What we will see during the day tomorrow is that rain will be moving in during the middle and latter part of the afternoon. Tomorrow night, that rain will change over to snow, and that change will likely happen very quickly as temperatures will drop rapidly tomorrow night, late in the pre-dawn hours of Sunday. And then as the, you get into Sunday morning, we're going to see occasional snow showers blowing and drifting of snow. And at this point, we're looking for about one to three inches of snow by Sunday evening. Max Track Live Doppler is clear. The storm is gathering out to our west, but still it's got a long way to go before it gets here. And our temperatures, they're still in the 40s. It's been a nice change of pace. Clouds will be arriving later tonight. We drop down into the upper 20s, but over the weekend it will be big weather swings. Tomorrow's pretty pleasant. Sunday afternoon is likely to be brutal. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. It has been a nice change of pace today. I guess we'll just have to enjoy it while we can. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Kentucky's quarterback Mike Hartline is facing several charges this evening, and police are also investigating claims that he assaulted a woman. Jamie Weiss joins us live from Lexington now with the latest. Police say an argument started in a cab ride home from Tin Roof. That cab then stopped here on Crescent Avenue to drop off to drop off a student who lived in one of these apartments. It appears that that's when things got out of hand. That's the LEX 18 Big Story at 6. The focus for Mike Hartline should be January's bowl game. Instead, both he and his girlfriend now have legal troubles to worry about. Today, a lawyer entered a not guilty plea on both their behalfs for several charges, including disorderly conduct and public intoxication. But there could be more. Apparently last night there was a disorder, and during the disorder there was a uh, young lady who was assaulted, had filed an assault report with us and that's what we're investigating today. Police say a cab dropped Heartline, his girlfriend Ashley Carnes, and some other students off at an apartment on Crescent Avenue late last night. That's when neighbors heard screaming and say Heartline punched Samantha Sheeran in the jaw. She landed in their doorway. They say they also saw Carnes pulling Sharon's hair. Well, it was definitely crazy. I didn't really know what to think at the time. I was just kind of worried about Samantha. I think everyone was, and um, we, we just really wanted them to leave. Police say Heartline started to leave the area when they showed up. Hey Mike, you got Mike, anything to what say? What do you say about the charges? He also tried to avoid our cameras as he bonded out of jail early this morning. Ashley Carnes is also charged with having a fake ID. Police say the ID she had on her belonged to her sister. As for the victim in this case, her roommates say she is back home with her family resting this weekend. Covering the news live in Lexington from the LEX 18 mobile newsroom, back to you. Both Hartline and Carnes are scheduled to be back in court January 24th. Well, will he or won't he? Will Mike Hartline be the starting quarterback for UK when they play Pittsburgh on January 8th? LEX 18's Alan Cutler is here with more about that. Nancy, if it was Rich Brooks, the answer would probably be yes, but this is Joker, and this is his program, and this is his first high-profile case. Rich believed in standing by his players during the due process, but it's no longer Brooks's program. So we can tell you this that it's a holding pattern. Kentucky isn't talking. Joker is scheduled to talk tomorrow after practice, and we don't expect him to say much because the process is ongoing. We do know this. In Joker's first year, he has made it known that he's not afraid of disciplining his players. He's done it to six players that we know of so far this season. Most of the penalties are suspensions for what we believe are minor things, and most of the time, the players have missed the first quarter of a game. In Matt Rourke's case, it was a game because of the DUI. 
UK is back at practice for the bowl game tomorrow, and Brent Carney will have Joker's comments tomorrow on LEX 18. Nancy, back to you. All right, Alan Cutler, thank you. And we'll continue to update you on the situation on lex 18com as well as later in LEX 18 Sports. The death toll from house fires in Kentucky just took another jump. Three more deaths to report, this time from northern Kentucky at a house where a family was using space heaters to try to stay warm. Kristen Flum is live in the LEX 18 newsroom with more. Nancy Dustin Spencer says his family had been behind on the gas bill and his family was using heaters instead. A cause has yet to be determined in the fire that killed three of his family members last night. His twin four-year-old daughters, Madison and Mackenzie Spencer, were killed along with their great-grandmother, 74-year-old Nancy Carol Spencer. The girl's mother, Mary Beth Spencer, and two other children, two-year-old Ethan and 11-year-old Christina Reniker, escaped the burning home. Dustin had to drop out of the third floor window, and by the time he realized the others hadn't made it out, it was too late. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find them anywhere, and I looked at the back of the house, and it was completely engulfed in flames. Um, at that point, a real sad reality set in, and they're not here with me anymore. Dustin says he's not sure where the fire started, but the first time anyone noticed it was in the back of the home in the dining room. The cause remains under investigation tonight. Nancy. His wife, Mary Beth Spencer, was treated and released from the hospital. 11-year-old Christina is still at Shriners Hospital in Cincinnati. The latest fire deaths in Kenton County mark the 10 people killed in a house fire in the past nine days in Kentucky. Last Sunday, a man, his cousin, and her two children died in a Harrison County fire. The Friday before, a house fire in Woodford County killed a three-year-old boy and his seven-year-old sister. Their five-year-old brother, Donnie, suffered burns. And a day before that, a 67-year-old man was found dead inside his burned-out home in Perry County. A tearful apology in court today as a Lexington man was sentenced to 20 years in prison for killing his girlfriend's baby. 32-year-old Layman Wessner was convicted of wanton murder in September for the beating death of two-year-old Jessica Nolan. Wessner read a statement to the jury saying he crumbled inside when he found out Jessica had died and he was truly sorry for what he called an accident. I would not instantly give my heart, my last breath, my everything to switch places with that little girl. Wessner's lawyer says he and his client will appeal. A lucky landing for one helicopter pilot in Letcher County. It happened around 1130 this morning on Hazard Road at the Paradise Pizza. Witnesses say 56-year-old Tim Kearns hit a power line which sliced in half and hit the helicopter's windshield, breaking it. The power line then fell on a nearby truck. State police say Kearns was taken to the hospital with minor injuries. His two passengers were not injured. The helicopter had been contracted to survey power lines, providing service to United Coal. A word of warning tonight out of Jessamine County. Be extra diligent about locking your doors. This morning, one woman came face to face with an unexpected visitor in her kitchen. Lee Searcy has the story. Just after nine in the morning, a woman returning here to her Catnip Hill home walked into her kitchen to find a stranger up to no good. The suspect that was in the house was making his way to the exit and uh, she walked in on him. The suspect, a stocky white man in his 20s or 30s with short blonde hair, a ball cap and jeans, pulled a hunting knife on the homeowner before taking off in a white four-door Ford Taurus. What he didn't realize, the woman's husband was inside the home the whole time, but had no idea the robber was in the house. The house just appeared to be empty because the car uh, that's normally parked outside was gone. What is even more troubling for Jessamine County deputies, this was a completely random incident. The woman never saw the man before today. Investigators say she did everything right. She complied with the suspect and he left without hurting anyone. Normally it's a, a burglary of an unoccupied house in this instance. I mean, the person, whether they knew it or not, came in on the people. And I mean, you know, and then threatening, you know, the, the resident with a knife, uh, you know, kind of is also, that's taking it to the next level there. Covering the news in Jessamine County, Lee Searcy, LEX 18 News. The Sheriff's Department says the man could be between 5'11 and 6 foot 2 inches tall. If you have any information that might help, you're asked to call the Jessamine County Sheriff's Department at 859-885-9512. 
The state fire marshal had put a temporary stop to it, but tonight at one high school, the show will go on. That story in a couple of minutes. Also ahead, ask and you shall receive. Employees of a Lexington company hear about the need at the Salvation Army, and boy, do they deliver. With coverage you can count on, this is LEX 18 News at 6. A few bumps in the road for West Jessamine High School, but the show will go on. Their performance of A Midsummer Night's Dream was shut down last month after the state fire marshal said the set of dried trees, brush, and grass was a fire hazard. School administrators say they fixed the problems and will perform tonight and tomorrow night at 7.30. Donations come in all sizes, and today the Salvation Army in Lexington got a much needed one. It happened at a time when the shelter is at capacity, and people are depending on it more than ever. LEX 18's Adam Baker explains. This is a load of help coming in from employees at Columbia Gas. It's a car full of bedding for the Salvation Army's emergency shelter. They always need sheets for the 152 bed facility here. So I went back and mentioned that to some of our employees and they said, why don't we collect sheets and take them to them? So we did. But the company did not stop there. It is also donating $10,000. The Salvation Army provides so many broad services to so many families who are in need, and I, I know that they will put that money to good use to help families in our community. The Salvation Army says the timing couldn't be better. It's something that we really needed, and we're very grateful that um, you know they have thought about those who are homeless and are giving their own resources to make somebody's life a little bit better. And they also hope the generosity inspires others too. I think whether it's an individual or a company, I think there's something that we can all do to help out and pitch in a little bit uh, during this time. Covering the news in Lexington, Adam Baker, LEX 18 News. Other Lexington shelters that have been full lately and in need include the Hope Center and the Catholic Action Center. Well, hang on tight. We've enjoyed the renewed warmth around here, but things are going to change quickly. Your LEX 18 Storm Tracker forecast is right after this.